injury. First of all, to help us continue to work together to support the young person in school, meeting the demands and expectations that we have of them. But more importantly, to give you some, I suppose, ammunition, to give you some power with some of the conversations that you will be having at home in the next couple of weeks. Okay? In order to prepare our young people for the exam season that is following. Hopefully you'll be able to go away today with a whole heap of different messages and be able to say to your young person, mm, but actually this is what was said. Mm, no, we need to do this because this is the expectation. If you go away with nothing else, that part of that that power in that conversation hopefully will help tip some of the work that we are getting out of our young people. So tonight we've got a whole heap, I've got a lot of colleagues here who will talk, so you're not just going to listen to my voice, two minutes, but we kind of wanted to bring you guys together so we can share with you where we are up to with our year 11 and where we need to get them to in the next couple of weeks. Okay? There will be opportunities to ask questions at the end of each of the sessions. But if you feel like you need to ask a question, please, by all means, put your hand up and we will we'll do the best we can. Okay? You know, we're talking to each speak, so if I'm not being very clear, or when my colleagues are being very clear, please guarantee them somebody else going, uh, what does that mean? Just ask. Okay? So the session will be, I'm going to uh, kind of go through the first kind of like two or three slides. And then I'm going to hand over to Mrs. Mazzara, who is curriculum leader for English, to talk English specifically. I'm going to then hand over to Mr. Felder, who is curriculum leader for uh, languages, German and Spanish. French. French. Sorry, German and uh, French and Spanish. <laughs> Hello. Um, and then I'm going to hand, to, hand over to Mr. Jones, who is curriculum, assistant curriculum leader for science. And then finally, Mr. K and Mr. Mitchell, who are going to talk maths for you. Okay? We'll then come back together and talk revision timetables, exam timetables, and go from there. You've got packs of goodies and some information in front of you. We will take you through the relevant bits, so please don't worry about that at this moment in time. Okay, let me just start. So, we've got a a week left, literally, four days next week before we hit Good Friday and then we hit the Easter holidays, okay? We don't really say holidays because that suggests kind of sitting back a bit. And whilst we want our young people to take time out, absolutely, whilst we want them to kind of re-kilter their kind of work uh, rates, we also know that they're going to need to continue with the momentum, if not build it, over the Easter holidays. And we have a lot of staff committing to revision and coming into school over Easter to provide support uh, for your young person. And we want, especially the cohort that I have here, to capture that and to use that to the best possible outcomes that we have. When we come back after Easter, we have three weeks before the exam season begins. Three weeks before they actually start their GCSEs. Um, and of which, in those three weeks, we've got art exams that happen over two weeks, five hours one week, five hours the following week. And in place with that is also 30 minute languages orals. <laughs> Staff are preparing them for this at this moment in time. Okay, a lot of work has been done. You'll have resources in your folders that so will go through to tell you where they're up to in terms of your MFL exams. We really don't have much time, so that's why it felt right that we do this this evening, okay? And appreciate lots of our colleagues here, lots of our parents here, and our fasting and our part of the Ramadan kind of season. Thank you for coming out as well, okay? The exam season, the first exam is drama, um, and that starts on the 9th of May. Beyond that, we have an intensive six weeks in which your young people will sit an exam in every single subject that they are studying. Six weeks. That means that some of our young people are going to be doing two exams on some days, and some days are heavier than others. 
we are in the process and have been talking about this for a long time. So actually pacing our young people, getting them ready for the exams now and in the next couple of weeks before they actually start the exams is massively important. We know young people are quite short term but, and actually, to be fair, most of us will have been that. If I've got a science exam coming up next week, I need to be, oh, my next exam is science, I'm going to be thinking about science, but actually the following day, I'm going to do the Spanish exam, the following day after that, I might do my food exam. You're not going to have much time in between that. So we need to prep them as best we can together now, you know, over the Easter break, over the three weeks that they come back, so that they are ready to go back to their revision, to go back to their notes, to pick up what they need to do, and then revisit that learning, which most of it should already be in their heads. Lessons will also be used, now actually some of them, but certainly post Easter, to deliver revision in the school as well. We have a massive range of revision <laughs> sessions before school. Staff are in the building, quarter to eight, planning and prepping, and we have revision before school, and we have revision after school every night as well. And that information is part of your packs. We'll go back to that as well. But this is what the kind of breakdown looks like. Week one and week two. Week one starts kind of easy, like I said, the Thursday. But week two, look how busy that gets. The blues are the exams that happen in the morning and in the afternoon. Okay? So if I just picked out uh, the 14th of May, we've got English in the morning and then we've got computer science in the afternoon. For some young people, well, that's an intense day. We then go on to uh, week three and four, okay? Week three, we then have a half term break, but again, you can see morning and afternoon, morning and afternoon, morning and afternoon, it's very busy. And then we have week five and week six. Some of the smaller exams are towards the end, but actually, for most young people, they will go right the way through to the six weeks. Previously, in, in, in years prior to COVID and years prior to that, sometimes by week six, actually a number of our students have finished, but that's not the case anymore. Time is precious, time is important, and we need to get our young people to where they need to be. They are competing with every other year 11 student staff across the country, and our staff here go above and beyond on a regular basis to make sure they are best placed, even when they give up with themselves, that they are best placed to go in there and smash the exams and do it to the best of their ability. We're not expecting nines from every single person. We just want them to do the best they can so that when they leave us and in the summer they get their results, they can go on and do exactly what they want to do. They don't have any hurdles, they have the opportunities to move on. So, I'm going to now, oh, just finally. This yellow sheet is the full exam season, okay? <laughs> By the end of next week, you will have, we're just finalizing tiers of entry in some subjects. By the end of next week, you will have an individualized timetable that will come home that is just pertinent to your young person. So that will be much more bespoke, but it felt right after today for you to go home and maybe sit with your young person and say, let's have a look at this together, okay? Um, okay, I'll come back to that. I'm going to hand over to English. This is for Dara, who's going to talk specifically in English. If you open up your folders and your packs, you will see the resources in for English. It looks like this. They should have a red, amber, green grid on the front, and that's the start of a pack that should be paper clipped together. So that's what I'm going to be talking through now. A pack that looks like this. We've got some exam papers and a red and green grid on the front. Okay. What we've also done, as we know, tonight is a lot of information. We have also printed the slides, so you should have a set of papers for you to be able to go through and make notes on if you wish as you go through the presentation. Okay, so I'm going to get started. Um, I'm just going to talk you through some key things that are coming through um, at the moment in English. 
Um, so I'm going to be talking you through the PowerPoint slides. So like Ms. Finley said, you should have a copy of the slides. I'm going to that. A copy of the slides in case you want to just follow on there as well. And also your individualised pack with your young person's data on the front in terms of how they performed so far in English. I want to just share with you, in case you weren't aware, of how English is broken down. All year 11 students sit both English language and English literature, and at the end of that, they will receive two separate GCSE qualifications. As you can see, each of those qualifications consists of two exams, and they are full-on exams. On the left-hand side here, we can see the language side of things. Each of those papers has five questions, and they test a variety of reading and writing skills. Students have been working on their language skills since year seven. So we've been building that stamina and building those skills and building that knowledge all the way through the five years here at Talking High. On the right hand side, you can see literature. We've got two exams again, and we've got a range in, in yellow on the board there. They're the texts, they're the set texts for English literature. So your young person will be studying and has been studying and revising for Macbeth, Jekyll and Hyde, Lord of the Flies, and Poetry Anthology. Okay? I just wanted to reiterate, in case you weren't aware, that if students don't secure a grade four in English language, they have to resit it at college. There is no um, <laughs> other way around it, unfortunately. So all students need to be aiming for at least a standard pass if they don't want to be consistent at college, if they obviously don't want to be the case. So what have they done so far? So in November, students sat a set of English language papers, and then in March, they, set, they sat another set of English language papers. And unfortunately, for some students, this data is not where we would like it to be. Some students made no progress between November and March in terms of those exam grades, some students actually went down. Some students made, made progress, but not everyone. So what you can see on the front here, I'm going to talk you, um, talk you through this, this sheet now. And I've just got student A on the board here just to explain it to you. We've got a breakdown of how your young person performed in the college entry mock exams, which is the first line of data, which is not RAC, red, amber, green. And we have the second line of that language data, which is from the March mock exams, the most recent set of exam papers that students sat for English language. What we've done for each individual child in this room is we've looked at that data and we have ranked each individual question on those papers so that every one of you in this room now can see which are the areas that are holding your young person back from achieving their potential in this subject area. So, for example, student A on the board here has got one, two, three, four, five red questions and three answer questions. Those red areas must be the priority for revision. At this point, it is really, really important that students are posting in their comfort zone when it comes to their independent revision. It's really important that we are pushing them to have a go at the ones that feel a little trickier, that have been, that have proved to be a little trickier in the mock exams. And then in the second group that you've got there, you've got an outline of how your young person has performed in the literature mock exams, because they've also sat some literature marks. You can see here that student A has a lot of work to do, there's um, a lot of red on that grid there. Um, but it's about prioritising revision. There, is, there are a lot of plates to spin across all subject areas, I'm aware of that. But there are, within each individual subject, also lots of plates to spin. So please encourage your young person to prioritise those red and amber areas. In your packs, I'll just show you briefly, you will see that you've got brand new English Literature Paper 1, English Literature Paper 2, English language paper one and English language paper two. So what would be brilliant over the Easter break is if all students could complete their red and amber areas in these fresh papers. Because repetitive practice is what we know makes the most difference. On the reverse of your sheet, you can see the boundaries. So that you can see, because if I just go back to student A, 
In the marks mock exam, student A got a grade five overall. If I turn to the other side of my sheet, I can see how many marks my child was away from the next grade or their target grade, but that's even higher. So that's just for your information. I want to just talk to you briefly. <laughs> Sorry about uh, taking too much time. But I wanted to just talk to you briefly about some of the issues that we are coming up against in class that are preventing our young people from making the progress we want to see and we know that they're capable of. The first thing is the lack of student independence. We've had a real issue with homework completion. A real issue. It is set in every class on a Monday and it's due in every Monday. It's set on teams, it's given in a booklet, but we've had a real low completion rate in some classes. That's a real issue that's holding students back. Low attendance at revision sessions is another issue. We hold uh, morning revision sessions and after school revision sessions on two days of the week and yet last week we actually only had 26 students attend. The time is being invested in creating these resources, we just need the students to arrive and to maximise on that time in revision with an expert teacher. And the final thing is lack of knowledge on the literature text. This is impacting on essays because if students don't have the basic knowledge of the plot, the themes, the characters, then they're not going to be able to showcase the skills in the way that we need them to secure those grades. So I've talked a little bit about the, um, the homework situation. Set on a Monday, due on a Monday, nothing will change from now until the exam. So if you could encourage students to be making sure that they've completed that, that would be fabulous. We've seen incredible, listen, I can't stress this to you enough, I've been here for 14 years and the biggest, biggest shift comes from students working independently at home. And I say that with absolute confidence. I had a student in my class last year who was predicted a grade six and got a grade nine. Every single week she was coming to me with pieces that she'd done at home. And that lift was that dedication in that independent time. It makes a huge difference. We hold revision sessions on a Monday and a Thursday after school, so again, encouraging students to come to those would be wonderful. And just reminding ourselves of that need to be revising all of those literature texts. In terms of the skills, we'd love to see students planning their responses. That's really, really key. We also would love to see students extending their ideas. And I've got a few ideas here on the slide, but I'm just conscious of time. But it is written for you on your, on your copy of the slide, so hopefully you'll be able to read this through with, with your young person. And then finally, an issue in the exams is students not writing enough. That makes a huge difference to overall grades, as you can imagine. So the best thing that we can do um, to, to support with that is asking students to complete exam time exam practice. And what I've done for you on the right hand side there, and you'll see in your pack, is I've outlined how long each question on each paper should take. So if your young person only has 20, 25 minutes to spare, they could sit down and do question four on language paper one time. Because the more they do that timed exam practice, the better and more confident they will be at completing four papers. Final thing from me, final couple things from me, is that every student on Wednesday next week is going to receive this Easter holiday revision booklet. It must be completed over the Easter break and will really support students with their revision. One part of what we're expecting. We'd also love students to complete their red and amber language paper questions and literature paper questions that I've just gone through with you um, in your pack. There are some revision guides available at Student Services if you would like those at a reduced cost. There, are, there is an abundance of revision materials available on Teams. And again, that's the location of that is on your uh, slides and your packs and students know where to find that. We've got some online platforms that really support with revision. And again, that's in your packs. And I just would also like to just plead um, for you to encourage, if possible, um, attendance at our Easter revision sessions. These are so well planned and so well resourced and are a really good opportunity for students over the Easter holidays, not holidays, sorry, great, um, to receive some of that expert intervention uh, in terms of getting them ready for these exams. And that's it from me, really, other than to say it's a big job 
Not just passing, but succeeding in this subject takes work, it takes dedication, as it does for all of the subject areas. They're juggling a lot for English, but without independent work at home, and without timed exam practice, and without doing the do in class and at home, we may have to resit at college, and we don't want to have to do that. So if I could just encourage everybody to read through that information again, perhaps at home with your young person, and encourage some of those things to take place, that would be amazing. And I'm going to pass on now to Emma Fan. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. Um, I'm aware that not everybody does uh, do French or Spanish, but if your young person does, could you please take out your French or Spanish uh, book that should be in your pack? It does have a little sort of circular flag on the front of it. Um, and on the front, you will see there's a little slip that's been glued on that has areas that your young person needs to work on, and that's come from their class teacher. So that is personalised based on the um, recent mock exams that we have done. But I will take you through the information for each skill area, just highlighting, like Ms. Fanny said, how we can uh, support those conversations at home in order to direct revision to really meaningful and purposeful areas. So, so can I just stop for a second? Yes, of course. Some people won't have one if your, if your young person doesn't do French or Spanish. So, um, before we look at the information in that book, I want to just point out some really important online resources that we use. Our students use Quizlet as a platform for learning vocabulary. And there's obviously a lot of vocabulary in our subject because it is all about the words. So, students should be using their Quizlet account to cover the topic areas, and all that's on there and directed for them. It is on their PLC at the back of their knowledge organiser as well, and there's information on how to use that in the book group too, which I will uh, touch on later. Kaboodle is our online um, textbook. It's a, re it's a free online textbook that's really useful for completing things like reading and listening uh, practice. Each student has a logon. Uh, if your young person doesn't remember theirs, please uh, ask them to ask the teacher or, e or you can email in and we can get that for you. Uh, we do have CGP revision guides as well, they are available through school. There are some also in the school library that you can check out for free. And finally, a Revision World is a, is a, is a new website, so it's in its infancy, but it's a really useful place to look at things like vocab, grammar, and different skill areas to practice as well. It also has loads of past papers on there, so it's a really good place to find past papers. They're available on Teams, but they're also on there with discount the files and everything, so that's a really useful website. Uh, just to give you an idea of the structure, um, of the High the Foundation. The main thing I want to take away from this is that each skill area is worth 25%, so all parts of the MFL exam are equally weighted. Um, and I want to give you, as in fact, already mentioned, just to highlight where these states are. So the speaking exam is our next uh, exam, and that will start the second week after Easter. So for many students, it'll be one of their first exams. And the good thing is that there will not be a clash around having to think about another subject, because as I'm trying to point out in that really tight exam sequence, uh, the students are going to be kind of fitting lots of different subjects. So this uh, is kind of the only, unless you do art, it's one of the only ones there. The reading and listening and writing for French come very early on. So if your young person does French, um, they are quite intense and quite early on. Spanish, they last a little bit longer, but speaking will be completely back after Easter, um, and in class we'll be practicing for that as well, but we expect students to be revising over Easter to know their responses and, and, and have those read. In terms of planning for revision, we expect to each 90 minutes a week at home. Um, students should be doing little and often. It could be three to 30 minute slots, or if they're looking on both it could be short slots, but more often. We want students to look at a range of skills, lots of vocabulary, speaking, writing, reading, and listening. Um, so the speaking exam, as I said, uh, it comes up very soon after Easter. The general conversation I've highlighted there in green is worth the most marks, but it's also the area of the speaking exam where students know most about it. They have a really good understanding 
uh, the questions that they will be asked in that section of the exam. So a lot of that is about going home and practicing those practice questions we've been doing in class. And students have those in their speaking booklet. So there's very little surprise in that general conversation section. I always tell students, if you pretty much knew the questions you were going to get on getting on your physics or maths or English exam, you would learn them really, really, really well. And that's what we expect students to do for this. Those questions are likely to be very similar to the ones that are on their writing paper as well, so that revision is doubly useful. In terms of the two other aspects of the speaking exam, role play, vocabulary is, is the most important thing. If they can't understand what they're trying, the, uh, the question is asking them to say, they're not going to be able to access the marks. And photo card is uh, they need to be able to extend their sentences. So that's using again vocabulary, but things like structures and verb form as well, which is really, really important there. A good place to practice those would be on the Doodle and also in their CGP revision guide. And as I said, the general conversations, people pretty much know the kind of questions they're going to get asked, and they have um, example questions to be practicing at home with prepared answers that they have prepared. In your pack, I've given you the question um, words and structures to help with that question forming. Exactly where to revise role playing for tasks for specific topic areas. I've given you the general conversation, uh, sorry, general conversation questions that students have so that you can test them or you can at least point out which ones do you know, which ones do you need to work on, and also some tips on improving speaking fluency and pronunciation. In terms of the writing exam, I'm going to go through the details of the marks that you can see in there in your pack. Foundation students. For the writing exam, students should be confident with opinions and giving reasons, but a bit of positive, a bit of negative, but a range. We don't want to see the same structures over again. They must be able to see past, present, and future. That does not mean every verb. That means that they know a few solid ones that they can use um, for different topic areas. I went, I go, I'm going to go and that will allow them to access that, um, that harder question, the 16 mark at the end of the foundation paper. Um, so yeah, must be able to form those verbs accurately. And a lot of that paper is about communication and clarity, not about being perfect. In your pack, there is a little structure of foundation and higher, so you can see how students get marks for each of those. So when you're going to put revising for the writing at home, you could say, okay, have you definitely got that structure in there, or have you definitely hit those tenses in that question? For the higher, um, you must be able to give a lot of detail and complex opinion. You must be able to use a range of tenses, not just past over future, and using things like pronouns too. There's a bit more detail in your packs about those. And a detailed description and breakdown of each question. There's a, uh, a list of key past over future tenses that you could help your young person learn at home. The structures for the 32 mark question in the higher paper, and examples from complex structures too. For reading and listening, the requirements for these two are quite similar in that you're expected to understand things. So vocab is the most important thing for these two papers. The more you know, the easier these papers are. Um, you see it every year, the students who spend their time on Quizlet, who can do well in their weekly vocab tests, do well on these papers. And the listening paper in particular, the grade bounds are usually very low, so these students find it quite difficult. So extra revision in that area is usually a really good place to uh, spend your time. Once you feel confident with a particular bit of vocab, it would be really important to uh, test yourself, either on Google with some learning <coughs> tasks or some of the past papers which I mentioned earlier that are on some of those websites. And there are uh, a list of words in the pack as well that change the meaning of sentences, so things like without, except. Those that can trick examiners will use on those papers, so students should be confident with those words. There's about 30 or so for French and 30 for Spanish and be confident with a range of positive and negative adjectives if something is great, if something is boring because that is another way that the examiner will try to um, convey uh, opinion in the papers. So as I said in your pack, links to where to revise each bit of vocabulary for the course on Quizlet, uh, where to complete practice tasks for each topic, so Google and CGP, review page numbers on there so you can help direct the revision at home, and those vital words that do change the meaning of examiners use as a trick. I'm going to hand over now to Ms. Miller, who's going to talk to you a little bit more about um, where to find some of that revision and maybe how to structure that at home as well. Thank you. Okay, I'm Ms. Miller, I'm assistant curriculum leader for languages. 
Um, I realise that we're speaking very quickly and we're giving you a lot of information, so I'm going to try not to overload you too much with the things that I'm about to say. But we have got MS Teams, and I know that quite often I hear students say, well, Miss, I don't look on Teams anymore. You know, it's a habit that we really do want students to keep up. We put lots of resources for our um, subject onto the Teams, as Ms. Zara said as well. On the front of your booklet, can I just read that? Have you got, who's got a manager? We've got a manager. Okay. Just because Sir mentioned, there's a little strip there that tells you, in very kind writing, which area that your young person needs to focus on to improve their grade the most, to have the most impact, because it's the bits where they're not quite meeting it. So, if it's in listening, in those areas where we've got reading and listening on teams, we have got past papers in there that they can do. We have got topic tests in there that have links to sound files. So they can do specific questions, listening independently at home, and then get the mark scheme, which is there as well for them to do. And obviously the speaking exam. I know Sir said, you know, they already have the questions. It would be wonderful to see the students that I know that we've got a lot of students that are sitting at grade three that have definitely got the brain power to do more than that, but they're not actually <coughs> going away outside of the classroom and taking the time to learn. So if you could be wonderful parents that are going, right, question four, question five, that's why that list of questions is in your book so that you can help them. So it is the same way as well for Spanish that we've got those things there. And we just wanted to point out as well, we've had some wonderful attendance at Spanish revision on a Thursday morning from the students that are doing the foundation paper. And we are increasing as well in attendance in the French. But I know sometimes it's tricky with clashes. Often when I hear from parents, it's that, oh, well, I wasn't sure. So we just want to make sure that we get that message across where the foundation, where the support is for students doing languages. And it would be great to see more of our students there. Because I know sometimes, you know, it's a very academic subject. You need that support. And I know we've seen improvements in the students that have been attending those, those sessions. So again, Sir shared these websites before. Um, it's just to help you find easily when the students are saying, well, I can't find this, I've left my bag, I've done this. You know, it's to make them become those independent learners. And then I hand over to Sir. I just want to add one more thing as well. And I understand that a few people don't have the um, NFL pack in your state, in your pack college lab, but we will get those to those students more normally than you Thanks very much. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Jones. I am the assistant for convener in the science department. I want to spend a bit of time talking to you about where we're to in our science uh, curriculum so far and, and what we want to do in the next week or so before Easter. And then really importantly, what we can use or what we can do during these kinds of time to make the most of that time, critical time in there. I have put these slides up on the board here, you can't really see them open, but basically they are the first dates of the science progress that GCSE. And what I want to say is they are on the horizon, but I also clearly want to say that we do have time here. There is time. If you start now, if you invest in what the teachers are telling you today, and this week, and in Easter, the new Easter holiday or break, then you do have time. Uh, it's not too late. But what we need to see is people investing in things that are offering and making the most of them on that. Uh, so, with that in mind, um, all of the content in science has been covered. Uh, the combined science cohort will do a two hour, at an hour 15 hour tomorrow, so we see two paper, um, and then we've assessed it all as well. So that gives us a really powerful bit of information about all of our cohort. So, in the college entry exam for the unit one, and in the March marks they did unit two. That's all of the 2023 papers that they've done there. So had you done this test last year, uh, this is what you would have got. So it's some really powerful information. And that information is going to be fed back, uh, already being so, uh, to the pupils uh, through some whole class uh, work workshops. Um, but as you can see, we've got lots and lots of data. We've analysed this data, so we've had an individual level of what people have done well on and what people still need to work on. You can see we've got a big gap in the middle, there's the chemistry. But we've got all of paper one and all of paper two. By tomorrow, we'll have done paper, paper two in chemistry, and that will be assessed. And then before you leave for Easter, you will have all that information. So we're feeding this back to the pupils in class <coughs> so they can identify where their strengths are. And that leads me on to what I want us to do. The next week, I know that over Easter, it's really about identifying those gaps in our knowledge and filling them. Okay? 
In science, what we're going to ask you to do is focus on the unit two content. So we've just sat the knocks in that. We've been fed back in our class units and whole, whole, uh, whole class feedback workshops as to where our strengths are, but importantly where our weaknesses are as well. So we're going to be making sure we're making the most of that time, listening carefully to the teacher and identifying where our strengths are. And using this time now to fill it, okay? So that we can box off unit two by the end of Easter and get back into unit one when we come back in summer one. Okay, that's the model, that's what we're looking to try and do, to try and make sure we're in the best possible position as we move into the summer term and essentially very quickly into our um, into our exam. Not too quickly, we do have time. Um, so here, here's a little bit of an example of what the pupils will be receiving when they do their, their feedback workshops. Again, it's been analysed, we see the red, we've got the amber, we've got the green, and obviously we need to prioritise those areas where we're not performing to our the best of our ability. Teachers will also, you can't really see it, but there's some really useful websites on there as well that I'm going to name now and I'll advise you to go and see. So, Save My Exams is particularly good for all your sciences. Physics and Maths Tutor, I know it says Physics and Maths, but there's all the sciences in there, so you can use that one really well. Uh, BBC Bike Size is a good one, and there's a YouTube channel called Cognito. We talk about these all the time in class, so we will share that again with pupils throughout this week and ongoing on So, really useful resources that you can use to support your learning at home. Um, in addition to that, we will be focusing our teaching to the areas that we think these pupils need more time and more exposure to. So again, when you're going through this stuff in class, guys, you haven't finished your country paper yet, you will be going through that one before you go home please. So please make sure you're making the most of that opportunity to identify your gaps and begin to fill them. Okay. Um, moving forward then, when we're identifying these gaps, it's important that we have the, the resources available to us to fill them as well. Uh, and I'm just going to show you a few of the things that we've got in the science department. We've got a really robust uh, suite of uh, materials that you will be able to use remotely at home uh, or when you come in to do your revision sessions to, to really improve your knowledge. Um, initially, I've got a proposed Easter revision uh, timetable. This, is, this has been provided for you as well. So at the minute, we've got two uh, Easter revision sessions. So on Friday, uh, ooh, until the days in there. But that's the Friday of the first week and the Monday of the second week. I think that's the fifth and the eighth. Um, there are revisions uh, processes or uh, sessions going on. Uh, more will become available. So there are teachers volunteering themselves a bit more uh, as we go through the week. So keep your eyes and ears peeled for uh, any additional uh, online or in person revision sessions available over Easter. Um, at home, some of the best things that you can be using are MS Teams. It's a really useful website, a really useful tool that we have been using a lot this year. Every year, eleven people will have access uh, to a whole, um, a whole, a large amount of vision resources that are in the, the general section of your MS Teams. So, in that section, there you go to the general section. You've got a documents tab, and in there, you've got biology, chemistry, and physics. Now let's say I want to do a little bit of revision uh, on biology at home. If I go into that section there, it's broken down into paper one and paper two. We are going to focus on paper two over Easter. That's what I'd like people to be focused on. So when you go into that one, uh, paper one and paper two are mirror images of the same thing. You've got the knowledge organisers in there. So again, that's about identifying and filling those gaps. Okay? Then you've got the past papers. So once you fill those gaps, you're happy with that. We need to make sure we've got this active element of testing. Do we know that we know this? When you put all of your revision resources away again, how much can you actually remember? So it's important that we have those testing processes as part of our revision. So past papers with the mark schemes, uh, revision PowerPoints, again, for filling any gaps, and then specification, specification questions, again, with answers uh, for testing. Um, other things that are available to you as well, uh, in the same Teams, this is still through Microsoft Teams, but we've got a home learning tab at the top there, which takes us to our uh, the, the science SharePoint provision. Now on there there's lots of resources, but what's particularly good about this is we've got some very specific past paper questions on very specific topics. So let's say you just finished uh, revising on electrolysis, you want to know well, how much of this do I know, you can go onto the website, you can go into the unit that's got electrolysis in it, and find specific exam style questions on that topic. And again, the mark schemes are on there. Uh, we've also got on there um, some pixel PowerPoints. Again, it's about filling those gaps, their PowerPoints, with um, information for, uh, it's really useful for the content of the human side. The other one that I'm gonna talk about as well is Educate. So Educate, please make sure that you know your Educate password and your login before you leave for Easter, uh, Easter break. Um, 
I wanted to show you the student version of this, okay? So you will have been provided with assessments and quizzes uh, throughout the year as homework, um, which accumulate here in the middle section. But as you do more and more of them, it gives you a, a grade for your individual specialism. So biology, chemistry, and physics. You can see that this person is doing quite well in all of them, but if you weren't, there might be an amber or red section over there. So maybe that's where you could start your revision process, or certainly start the assessment of your revision process. So once you think you know it, get on to educate and see if you can test yourself. So a really useful tool on the right hand side, you don't need anyone to set you anything, you can go and do that by yourself. And in addition, there's a, re a revision wizard at the top there as well. So this is an AI powered process or tool, uh, and it, it recognises where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are, and it ensures that you're asked questions that you need to work on. Okay? So, really uh, useful uh, bits of information on there. The only other thing that I wanted to mention before I pass over to Matt is uh, there are revision uh, books available here at the school if you go to student services. We've got CG, CGP ones for combined science and some Collins uh, revision guides for triple or, or separate science. Um, I also want to echo some of the concerns that I know that uh, Jody mentioned in English. Uh, attendance to revision is low uh, in science. We are offering a lot of sessions. We have to school on Tuesday, after school on Thursday, before school on, on Thursday, on school, before school on Friday. Please speak with your teacher. When are they available? When are they revising? And get yourself there. You have an expert in the classroom to really help you. Go with questions. This is what I've been revising. This is what I'm still struggling with. Can you help me with this? Uh, and also homework as well is something that we do feel is not uh, where it should be at the minute for us. The homework is going to be choose under in everything that we're doing in class. It's designed to try and help you improve your knowledge. Okay, that's everything I'm going to say for tonight, so thank you very much for your time, everyone. Thanks, Thanks. 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 So, um, I'm Kay, I'm one of the assistant curriculum leaders in maths, and I'm talking about whereabouts our students currently are and where we'd like our young people to get to by the 16th of May when the first maths exam arrives. So, uh, it is possible to put on at least a grade of progress in maths, the way your students currently are, compared to where they're going to be at the end of the year. This is only done for your vision being specific, purposeful and regular. Uh, so when we say regular, we are talking about every day for a week, so five times a week, uh, for a good 45 minutes to an hour. So over the Easter break, Monday to Friday, a session a day for 45 minutes to an hour will make a difference. Uh, and it's, used, it's really important we use the March mocks for revision. So after every single paper, every member of staff in the department has completed a question of analysis, you can see here, uh, and we do this for every paper. So that means we've got, if you look at this, these are all actual data taken from a class in year 11. The green for these, this first section here is questions one to eight on a paper where people have got every single mark. We then start to hit these pockets of red and amber where students are getting no marks or one or two. We then use this to give students a personalised learning checklist which they've all received free. Some students I know may have lost some of these but were reissued if needed. But that will give them a breakdown of their questions and a sparks code for every single question. This means that students can run on sparks and access the independent learning. They can search the code that they need and then access questions and videos to support for each of those areas. What is really important, and a lot of students like to get their Personalised learning checklist and go, there's lots of red at the end, I need to focus on that. What is more useful and more impactful is looking for those red and amber areas early on in the paper. The back end of the paper is the harder section and it's a lot easier to get those nice quick wins by focusing on the specific areas early on in the paper. So students need to look at their PLC, really breaking it down and focusing on where they need to provide. Other resources you have available, you have uh, past exam papers that can be found on Maths Genie, on Corbett Maths, and on their team pages. The, there's lots of other resources available on there as well, including uh, topic specific work and five day questions, looking at a range of topics for students to practice. 
We also have on Teams pages, if you go into the Lessons tab, and then my circle moved a little bit, but it's on under exam question videos, we have created a bank of resources where members of staff are going through specific questions for each class, looking at exactly how they need to approach question. Uh, most importantly, it's a mark not program. Just the end here, you can see every single question has been gone through. And if students are stuck and they get their PLC and go, I still don't understand how to do highest common factor and lowest common multiple, which is question eight, they can go in there and look at the video for that section. And it will support them make that progress. Something else they will be receiving, and this will be on Tuesday's lesson, they're going to each get a booklet. It is going to be great specifics for the grade they're aiming to achieve. And it's been broken down into 10 areas. They're the most popular or most common areas across the year group that students need to work on. And when they receive that, members of staff are going to signpost the areas that they need to work on. In the booklet, it will then have each section will have the sparks codes that are useful that will address the common misconceptions in maths for that area. And then a key information section, which has a step-by-step -step breakdown of the key things that students need to remember or the common misconceptions. Once students have completed that bit, they can then attempt the questions over the next few pages with answers to check on our own available on Teams. The last thing I'd like to talk about is, I know quite a lot of young people here have math tutors. Um, they are incredibly powerful if you have one. Just please make sure that they're being used effectively. If you have a maths tutor, please encourage your young person to sit down with, them with their personalised learning checklist and target their revision effectively. Be careful about it. If students want to do past papers with a tutor, that is brilliant. Lots of students work well with lots of repetitive exam practice, but it needs to be the student doing the work, not the tutor just showing them how to do questions. They need to be able to ask questions and develop their understanding. Um, I think it's a pleasure to thank you. Back to me. I've just kind of stood there reading the room and I appreciate that that is a lot of information that you guys have had in the last 45 minutes. Okay, it probably feels like four hours and 50 minutes, but it's actually only been 45 minutes. What we are going to do, obviously you've got the paperwork to support you, but this session is also the video, that's just such direct that I'm going to um, and we will share the link to the video of tonight so you can go over, pause, and, and kind of go back to some of the messages that we've delivered tonight. Okay. I kind of want to bring it all together now um, and finish in the next couple of minutes. So, what we are talking about is a plan for the Easter holiday, the uh, Easter break. Okay? <laughs> and we have to say that to our young people because actually at this moment in time, the, the next five or six weeks are probably the most crucial in order to make gains and changes and a difference to the grades that are going to happen. Beyond that, so actually we're talking 11 weeks time, they will pack up their bedrooms, they will probably burn some of their books and they will have the longest, best summer of their lives. Okay? They're looking forward to a 12 week summer. So it's right that actually there's a bit of balance and that's what we say to our young people, you need to dig deep now because actually that's what you've got to look forward to. You've got to look forward to a prom and 12 weeks of actually doing very, very little. And that's your reward because of the hard work you are doing now. So I'm just going to talk about kind of the, the Easter holidays and then sort of like messages beyond that. So we're saying, we're advocating that actually young people need to be thinking about Monday to Friday doing between five and seven hours. If you think about it, they do five hours in school and then probably two hours when they get home to set themselves up for the best possible grades. And actually, I'm not talking about grade four straight. What we also have to remember for young people to go on and study the subjects that they want to at a lot of the colleges and a lot of the sixth forms, they need to be getting sixes 
or sevens in some of the subjects they want to study. That is an A-level route. Some of the colleges agreed we'll accept a five, but I don't want to leave anything up to chance. You would not want to leave anything up to chance. And actually, the difference between a five and a six or a six and a seven can be five, six, seven marks on a paper. That's what we're that's what we're begging in for, and that's what we are looking at. And that's why staff have gone to the trouble of doing individual analysis for your young person so they know where they need to focus. They know where they need to put the energies are that they have and the precious little time that we have left. That's really important. And we know that these what we call <coughs> marginal gains, these little wins overall add up to a brilliant and a much better grade. That's what they that's what this is all about. Okay? We're talking about structuring a timetable before the Easter holidays. We talk to our young people about what we call their cognitive load. The last thing they need to do is sit down on the day of their exam, on the day of their revision, Monday next, uh, a week and a half time, and say, right, what am I revising? No, we need your help, they need your help, we will do it with them also. They will get a blank timetable and they need to decide what they are revising based on their individualised feedback and have a plan before Monday comes so that on Monday they just get up and they know what they are doing. There's no time wasted, okay, procrastinating, deciding, oh, shall I do that, shall I do that? No, because that's already eating into really valuable and precious time. So we're gonna, we are going to run workshops tomorrow and next week with every single young person in school and help them draft an individualised timetable, okay? What we need you to do is when they come home, start with some priest holidays or any day to say, show me your vision timetable, show me your plan. Take it off them, stick it on the fridge or stick it somewhere where you can have daily conversations with your young person the day before the night before the morning off, say, what's your plan for today, babe? What are we doing together? What, what will I see in the next five hours? Tell me, what do you need me to do? Again, like I said, information is power. That will take away some of the conversation. I don't know what to do, I'm not sure. Actually, it's already been planned out for you. You've already done this. Maybe let's have a look at it together. Okay. So, this is what we are proposing <coughs> the timetable looks like. I'm not saying it's written in stone. You have your own family and personal circumstances. You have time away with family. You will book afternoons, mornings, days out, absolutely and absolutely perfectly right. But we are going to go with our kind of like our, our best idea. So that's what we're proposing. So the day starts, we're saying at 10 o'clock, a little bit of a lie in, a little bit of sleep, but maybe it's just on the Right? And we've built it down to one hour sessions. And within that we're talking about 45 minutes of purposeful revision. And we talk about what we call active revision. That's not sat there making up. That's you going on online and testing. That's you getting revision cards made and getting mum to mum, come on, test me on this. Here are my cards, here are my questions, they're on the back. That's them going on <clears throat> and actually going on the MS teams and going to the questions and going to the resources and getting on what they need to be getting on with. Active revision, not sat there passively revising, passively highlighting, making it look pretty. No, they need to be doing something with that work. So we're saying the 12 till 1, they'll have a break for lunch for an hour, work till 4, from 1 till 4, again, it's only 3 hours, have an evening break for 2 3 hours, and then start again in the evening. You are, this is up for negotiation within your household and within the limits of your, your family setup. Okay? But the structure is the important thing and making sure that that is set up and agreed to and conversations are had is really key, okay? What we're also saying is because we are planning lots of school-based revision, start with that and that's what we will do to our young people. Say, actually, each revision is on on Tuesday morning. Let's block that in for two hours. That's already done because you're going to go and join in that. Okay, food revision is on a Thursday. Combined science revision is on a Friday morning. We'll block those out. So when you do get home, let's look at what we're doing at home. Okay? 
Also, what's really, really important is the carrots. We all know that. Actually, building that in, the carrot is something that's really like something to look forward to. Okay? Um, <laughs> carrots to, to kind of like something for them to look forward to, whatever it might be. Okay? The timetable is structured around that. So, TV night out, going to the films on Friday, or going to the gym, or football, whatever those, or basketball, you know, going and around and doing those kind of things that are equally important for our young people's well-being and for helping them manage what will be a really stressful situation. We're aware of that and we know that. So actually thinking about that beforehand and for young people to negotiate that. And that's, that's Monday to Friday. What we talk about, oh, let me just go back to this. Going back to some of the messages from today, I saw a couple of parents and they said, doing an hour of maths every day, kind of like do that. Actually, you have to. In order to make maths stick in our young people's heads, they have to do maths. You actually have to do it. And what we're saying is, if you do it, set hour every day, actually going back and revisiting, so thinking, it takes six or seven of the goals that takes that of knowledge in order for it to stick in the long term memory. Okay? Evan Houses, kind of memories of forgetfulness. Our young people know that it's a curve of forgetfulness. It takes it goes into your short-term memory, you revisit it again, you revisit it again, and eventually it goes into your long-term memory. So hello, how do you go on the exam table? I know this because I've done it three or four or five times. And that's what we're saying for our young people. They've been doing this in school, they've been being drilled with this. So actually for this young person we've said maths from one till two every day. Dead easy, it's routine. That also works for our young people. It's, it just means that they're not having to worry or think or use any of their brain power to do any of the organisation. They know what's coming. And then we've said an hour of English every day. If English is something they want to do at A level and pursue that, then maybe you want to put an extra hour in two or three times a week. Absolutely, because this is the spot for your young person. And then we've just put in options and there are option subjects within that. You will also know from the autumn data, from the spring data, where your strength, the person's young strength, person, start again, where your person's strengths are. So actually, where do they then need to put their, their energies in? Do they need to go back to the computer science work and make sure they're not quite secure in that, let's spend a couple of extra hours in that. Or maybe they need to do a bit more work on their sports studies because they've got an exam coming up. Or maybe, maybe, whatever it is, right for your young person. Go back to the data, go back to their, their kind of reports. This is this works. This is for all the reasons. This is not just a study here kind of making this up. This is based on research, active research from lots of people across the country, okay, that is saying how do we take the stress or layers of stress as best we can out of young people's lives at a really stressful period and how do we get them to maximise their potential and this is, this is the total model for that. What we have also said, and this actually really is the, the crucial bit, is putting in, so when you put in English, be really clear about what it is they're doing in English for that hour. Are they looking at English paper, literature, paper one, question one, question two? And actually the packs, the stuff that the staff have put together for you, will give you that individual analysis for your young person, okay? So, Darian, sorry. Darian still can't get English question paper two, question five, right? So actually, guess what? English question paper five is where we need to be working on because that gets, actually that's 20 marks. So really that's important, okay? It's that level. So using the resources that the staff have put together for you, for languages, for maths, for Spanish, for French, for science, putting that into the plan for your young person, okay? Like I said, we will draft that with them. It's for you then to be able to have that conversation. The important bit in this is make, is you, your important role in this is making sure that you have those conversations with your young person and you say, show me what you've done. Let me sit down, let me test you. Let me help, what's the plan for tomorrow? Let, don't forget five o'clock we're going off and doing this because we've earned that and that's your reward. And reminding them that actually this is a for us, 
we've all got our lives, we've got our job, we're doing what we need to do. This is about having more people's futures. And actually, this is the time. This time next year, we want them all to be off at college, doing amazing things, following their dreams, and fun pursuing that. The other thing as well I have to remind you is, going back to the grades, the grades that they get at GCSE are also the grades, thinking forward, my daughter's in this position now, the grades that they got at GCSE are the grades that then go on to universities. So in terms of their future proofing there, their kind of roots there, that's why these, these are high stakes, these are high stakes exams and it matters. Within all of this, we as a SAT team, Ms. Sawa, Ms. Banton, okay, we're always here. We are at the end of an email. If you have a question, or more important, if you're worried about your young person and you think they need a bit of intervention or a bit of extra support, then that's what we're here for. Okay? 24 hours a day, send us an email and somebody will be back. Mr. Rochford never stops. I've sent him off and he's actually looking like obviously. But we are here and we're here to have those conversations. We're here to work with you to help get your child, get your young person to where they need to be well. Okay? That's important. And we have a whole heap of different people that can support in terms of our well-being as well. Okay. I appreciate your time. Sorry I've gone over a little bit, but we are still here for any questions. But thank you for taking the resources and this video will follow. Thank you.